Welcome back to another episode of One Wingspan Above, where we discuss anything to do with ground effect. In this episode, we get into how to design a skin machine that is stable in ground effects. We also go through some region clarifications from their first flight video and take a look at RC Test Flight's hydrofoil ground effect craft. ThinkFlight have just done a brilliant video about how to make an airplane fly. I'll link that into the description for you. He talks about the neutral point and how to balance an airplane to get it stable in flight. I'd recommend watching the video if you don't know how that works just yet. We'll take it one further and apply it to ground effect here. Let's take what we already discussed in the previous videos and discover how to make a skim machine fly stable in ground effect as it is more complex than making an airplane fly. Let's recap what conventional stability in free flight is as ThinkFlight describes in this video. Lift and drag forces act in the center of pressure. This is the theoretical point where all pressures around the wing are combined. The location of this center of pressure changes with a change in angle of attack, or as we call it, the pitch of the wing. To make it easier on ourselves, we combine all the possible centers of pressure into one aerodynamic center. This is a theoretical point where the moment is constant, but the force on the wing changes when pitch changes. Interestingly enough, the aerodynamic center is roughly a quarter chord in free flight for conventional airfoil profiles. Now to make an airplane fly stable, if pitch increases by outside influences, the airplane should react by decreasing its pitch to go back to neutral. If the wing pitch increases, the force on the wing increases. And since the airplane rotates around the center of gravity, the force should act behind the center of gravity so that the wing will then decrease its pitch. Having the center of gravity before the aerodynamic center means stable flight. Apart from the force, there is also a moment around the aerodynamic center. This moment is counted by the tail. Since this moment generally is a moment that wants to dip the wing forward, the airplane tail generally creates negative lift to counter that moment. In ground effect though, things are a little bit more complicated. The center of pressure changes with pitch, but it also changes with height above the ground. This is where it gets interesting. The one aerodynamic center will diverge into two aerodynamic centers, one for pitch and the other one for height. So if the pitch doesn't change and the height changes, this is where the force works through the aerodynamic center for height. If the height doesn't change but the pitch changes, force works through the aerodynamic center for pitch. We can't suffice with just putting the center of gravity in front of the center of pitch. A Russian researcher called Iridov came up with a criteria for stable flight in ground effect. He says that the aerodynamic center for height needs to be in front of the aerodynamic center for pitch. And that the center of gravity should be between those two centers. Preferably, the center of gravity would be close to the center for height. Unfortunately, this does limit the range where the center of gravity can sit, so any change in payload, passengers or fuel needs to be balanced very carefully. Now, if the skim machine had a tail that was generating a downward force like the one of a conventional airplane, when the wing enters ground effect before the tail, as the tail will be higher up, then the wing would start to generate more lift and the tail would still provide the same downward force, resulting in a nose-up moment. The tail keeps producing a downward force and the skim machine would finally flip over. Skim machine for that reason have tails that create positive lift. The tails are generally quite large and are outside the effect of the ground. As I mentioned a few times before, I believe this is where the Regent Sea Glider will have a problem with safety. They don't seem to be designed to be stable in ground effects, which they actually confirmed. Watch the previous video to rewatch this. The Sea Glider relies on active computer control systems and without it, it is unstable and most likely not able to be fly flown successfully manually by a pilot alone. So if the computer system stops working, even with enough redundancy, the craft is unable to be controlled to avoid it from flipping over or crashing into the water. 
Last time we discussed the region test flight video, where we noted that the test model seems to fly outside of the ground effect. But according to information from regions, the test flights all took place inside ground effects as recorded per their test results. They stated that the camera footage made it look as if the craft was flying higher than it actually was. The second thing they wanted to clarify is that their sea gliders are actually designed for foiling as a separate mode of transport rather than a takeoff aid. The key to the sea glider, they state, is that it can transition harbors and rivers as a hydrofoil ferry. RC Test Flight have released a video where they test having a hydrofoil on a ground effect craft. One of their conclusions was that you need a computer to actively control the hydrofoil. This is exactly where the region sea gliders are equipped with this kind of system. They mentioned that hydrofoils start cavitation at 60 miles per hour or close to 100 kilometers per hour. This is where drag increases dramatically and there are consequences for pitch roll stability. They also concluded hydrofoils and flying wings don't really mesh up due to having misalignment in envelopes of operation. They do say though that currently it still might be the best way to get the skin machines out of water more efficiently. They suggest implementing retractable hydrofoils, which is exactly what Region are doing to their design. Interesting is that in the middle of testing, they moved their hydrofoil from the leading edge of the wing to the middle of it, as they had some issues with yaw control. According to research, the hydrodynamic center and heave for the hydrofoil should be aft of the center of pitch to make the craft stable in pitch. This should put the hydrofoil probably even further back than what RC Test Flight had it situated when they change it to be close to the middle of the wing. Unfortunately, they didn't comment on any increase of stability and pitch by moving the hydrofoil backwards. For now, thank you very much for watching. Keep in the loop by hitting that subscribe button and we'll see you here for the next episode of One Wingspan Above.